There was a big announcement yesterday from OpenAI. They just released Chat GPT Agent available on the Pro plan. And we're going to check it out and see what it's capable of. All right, they're saying that ChatGPT now thinks and acts proactively, choosing from a toolbox of agentic skills to complete tasks for you using its own computer. This reminds me of Operator. This was an old feature within ChatGPT. And by enabling Operator, it allowed itself to take control of your computer. So now they're saying they have its own internal computer that it can use. You can now ask ChatGPT to handle requests like look at my calendar and brief me on upcoming client meetings based on recent news. How about you plan and buy ingredients to make Japanese breakfast for four? Or how about you analyze three competitors and create a slide deck? So ChatGPT intelligently navigates websites. It's going to filter results and prompt you to log in securely when needed. It's going to run some code, conduct analysis and even deliver final products like slideshows and spreadsheets. Yeah, here we go, it's mixing operator and deep research. A big point is it's using its own virtual computer, so it doesn't take control of your own desktop. It says you're always in control. ChatGPT requests permission before taking actions of consequence. They say they're gonna keep adding to it to make it significantly better in the future. We'll come back to that article in a bit. But to access the agent mode, you click on tools and here it is right here, agent mode. It says I have 396 left. I was testing it a bit. I'm also on the pro plan. When you click it, it opens up some sources. You can search the web, search GitHub, connect box, Canva, Dropbox, or Gmail. They give you some suggestions right here. Find top rated coffee grinders under 150 on shop. Build a discounted cash flow model for energy company. Find a Las Vegas hotel and flight package on Expedia. Book dog-friendly hip camp with hot tub near San Francisco. Organize vegetarian recipes from all recipes by protein efficiency. You can click either of these tabs. They have more suggestions like order a banana cream pie ingredients via Instacart. Spreadsheets also has presentations. My initial testing was finding tennis tickets for the match near my hometown. I wanted the best available seats. And to be honest, it found me a seat, but I actually found one a lot quicker, a lot easier, and a lot cheaper by myself. Again, this is completely new. It's going to get better. They say by integrating these complementary strengths in ChatGPT, so that's deep research and operator, and introducing additional tools, they've unlocked entirely new capabilities within one model. It can now actively engage on websites, clicking, filtering, and gathering more precise, efficient results. You can also naturally transition from a simple conversation to requesting actions directly within the same chat. Just something about that clicking point. When I was watching it do work finding the tennis tickets, a pop-up came up on the website, and it actually went and closed the pop-up. I thought that was pretty neat. Here are some examples. I'm not going to watch these videos but feel free to check them out on OpenAI's blog. So here's one of it making a spreadsheet. Here's one taking research and action. In these videos, they just interview the creators of the agents and they talk about what it's capable of. They have one about customization and one for slideshows. So it's a virtual browser, meaning you don't have to install anything on your computer. It can perform web queries. It has a terminal and direct API access. It connects to apps like Gmail and GitHub. You can also log into any website by taking over the browser and can gather information through APIs. Here is a sticker example, create an anime style sticker of my company's mascot and then order 500 of those stickers. So it's going to sticker spark, finding a range of stickers. It's uploading a design that it made to sticker spark. It's showing how much it would cost $87 with shipping. And then it asks you to take over so you can provide your payment info. As ChatGPT works, you can interrupt at any point to clarify your instructions or steer it towards desired outcomes or change the task entirely. So I find this odd because you're just watching the agent work. So it's actually taking you the same amount of time as if you did it yourself. It would be better if you could set up this agent and then leave the computer. Continuing on down here, ChatGPT itself may proactively seek additional details from you when needed to ensure the task remains aligned with your goals. 
So it's going to stop and ask you questions if it becomes confused. If you're using it on the app on your phone, it will send you a notification when it's done with your task. Here are some benchmarks. This new chat GPT agent, which is deep research and operator. It performs better than O3, chat GPT agent with no tools, O3 with Python and browsing, and then deep research. It's also better at math than the other models. I wonder why that is. That's interesting. It looks to be because it has access to tools, also a terminal for code execution. And then this is a cool graph. This is economically important tasks. So it's comparing chat GPT agent with a human. And if the task normally takes one to three hours to complete, chat GPT agent usually wins. Actually, it appears to beat all the other models. It's as good as O3 in data analysis and better than O3 in data modeling. Here is a test called Spreadsheet Bench. It evaluates models on their ability to edit spreadsheets derived from real world scenarios. So chat GPT agent with Excel access beats all the other models, but a human is still winning. Not for long though, I feel that AI is catching up. Here's an investment banking modeling tasks. Chat GPT agent outperforms all the other models. And then here's a browser competition. How well it can grab information from the web. Chat GPT agent is better than deep research and O3. So with the release of this chat GPT agent, there are now new risks. So because it can take actions on the web and it can work directly with your data, it can possibly do something that you don't like. That makes sense. They've tried to add safeguards and limit the handling of sensitive information, but it sounds like they are working on it accordingly. They are aware that there may be problems, but they're trying to identify and resist these prompt injections from bad actors. And this is how they're requiring explicit user confirmation before consequential actions are taken. For example, in that sticker visual up top, imagine instead of ordering 100 stickers, it ordered 10,000 without your control. That could be thousands of dollars. So it's available to Pro Plus and team members. Pro users get 400 messages per month. Other paid users get 40 messages per month. They're also going to offer a flexible credit based system if you need more. And it's available for most users, just not European economic area and Switzerland. OK, let's test it out. Let's choose one of the examples here. We're going to go to actions. Let's try the order pizza delivery for 10 people on Uber Eats, but I'm going to stop right before I have to make the payment. OK, it says thinking setting up my desktop. It say it's going to find a local pizzeria in my area. OK, let's continue. Here we go. It's opening up a new tab. There we go. It opened up Uber Eats. <laughs> it navigated to the wrong page, so it's going back. It closed the little pop up in the bottom right corner. It's trying to log in again. There we go. Now it's logging in. OK, it wants me to take over Uber Eats. So I'm going to quickly set up an Uber Eats account so we can see what it does. Okay, I'm going to click take control. I understand. It's opening up that browser. Let me enter my information. I'm entering the code I got on my cell phone. And now it sent me a code to my email address as well. OK, I'm logged in. I'm going to click finish controlling. Here we go. It's thinking again. All right. It shows that I'm logged in. It closed that little pop up again. Interesting. So it's talking through what it's doing. I can see that the cookie overlay. I can't read fast enough. It's typing Kitchener, Ontario. I see a spinner indicating that it's loading. OK, it's going to the pizza category. It doesn't think pizza registered properly, so it's going to search pizza instead. It's confused what the search bar is doing. I'm seeing here 314 results for pizza. See if it realizes that it worked. Now it's looking at Peppy's Pizza. That is a good place around here. It's going to the featured items. This is pretty cool. It accidentally clicked on toasted subs and now it needs to go back. That's funny. It's looking at prices. It's funny. It keeps making mistakes and clicking back. Things are closing unexpectedly. And it's adding one to the cart. It's trying to add one again. Doesn't notice that there's something in the cart. It keeps thinking that. Oh, there we go. It confirmed that the first pepperoni pizza is added to the cart. How many times is it going to do it? It's adding another one. Now it's adding a large veggie pizza. And there it adds the second veggie pizza to the order. Now it changed to gray and it's confused. There we go. Does it know it added it to the cart? Let's see what it says. Clicking the cart icon wants to verify the veggie pizza was added, but it doesn't look like it was. Oh, yeah, it was added. There we go. Veggie pizza here. Let me zoom in for you guys. So created two. 
It also wants to add two pepperoni pizzas. Oh, it's funny. It's trying to click. It says the initial click didn't work. It's trying again. Okay, click on pepperoni pizza. Let's see if it could do it this time. See what I mean? How it's taking like way longer than if I just did it myself. I guess it's cool that it's doing it. I could technically close the computer and come back to it. Okay, it's also wanting to add a meat lovers. I've successfully increased the pizza quantity to two. There you go. I figured out it needs to click the plus icon within the picture. Opens up this. There we go. It's adding one to the order. Now it's opening up the cart. Two veggie pizzas, two pepperoni pizzas, one meat lover pizza. It's adding a special order note. Please include plates, napkins, and utensils if available. <laughs> okay, I like this agent. Let's go. I wonder if we could just like open up upwork.com, find any task, put that task into ChatGPT agent, and then have it fulfill the task, send over the task, and then the person on the other side would not even know if a human completed it. Okay, here we go. It added the following items. It also added the notes. The current subtotal is 107.75, and it wants me to take control to actually complete the purchase. Pretty cool. I don't really feel like pizza tonight, so I'm not gonna continue this, but at least we know it works. We're already ahead of the game for AI agents, and we're only getting better. I want you to check out youraiagent.com. This is a web app that I'm personally building. We are going to have an AI agent for everything business related. Check out the homepage where you can see all the agents we currently have available. Chatbots, email support agents, LinkedIn posting, Instagram, newsletters, Reddit bots, affiliate marketing, article creation, YouTube comment responders, Twitter bots. Come check us out. I'll leave a link to a YouTube playlist in the description below. And if you have any ideas for new AI agents, we're going to be better, cheaper, and faster than ChatGPT. Just leave a comment below of what you're looking for and I'll build it out immediately. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Later.